Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. I hope this finds you well. My name is Kat or Catherine. I'm a knitter based in Hertfordshire and here is my space where I have documented my knitting and fibre journey from my first project through to now and I feel like I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I do hope this finds you well and finding some joy, and some goodness in the world. It is a rather gloomy Tuesday today. I I'm, I feel like, just a heads up, it's going to be a waffly one. I've got a little bit of yo-yoing. Um, yeah, I just... This week's been a bit wool already and it's only Tuesday. So I had a really lovely few days last week and... But within that there was a few... I don't like to be so vague but I also don't like to put my um, trials and tribulations I guess out there too much um, but we've had some family health issues and it looks like fingers crossed um, things are moving in a good direction so that's something but it kind of while we were celebrating three birthdays in my immediate family last week there was also some kind of hoping and things and Alex and I got to go on a lovely lovely trip we went to Dorset um, so if, I'll go through it slowly at some point but we went to Dorset um, as well as Horsham and there's some really hopefully lovely footage that I will get to share with you because I definitely have some knitting like definitely do but um, yeah I feel like there should be some really really special footage and I'll talk about what we did at the end so that if you're here for knitting only you'll just kind of get that. Um, yeah, I have made myself a hot drink and it's something that I haven't had in a while and it's because I've had one portion left and I do get into a little bit of a savour place with my drinks because they are such a special moment for me having like while I have every morning I have a cup of tea I didn't last week a couple of days I missed out on tea um, I do tend to really try and make sure that I'm conscious and intentional about how I'm using it whilst not scurrying things away and forgetting about them when they're past their best because that is also a very sad thing to do that's something that I've had to practice not doing. I was the kid growing up that... So from time to time, my sister and I had a sun pat jar each for peanut butter. Um, I believe I had a red lidded one and she had a blue lidded one. I was always the green girl, my sister's always the blue girl. It stayed throughout our lives. Um, and we would, from time to time, get to go to the uh, it was called the Tingling, which I just think is a really sweet name, and we—it's it, the genuinely the name of the news agents that we used to go to, and we could fill it with like pick a mix, but it wasn't. It was like the penny sweets sort of sort of pick a mix, but kind of. Do you know what I mean? I loved blackjacks, um, and my sister would get through hers, and I would like really try and savour it. Like I would try and drag them out as long as possible. So I've always been that person, but I'm trying to not let it go past the best ofs. So yes, all that to say, I have a chai, and it's the last one, so... Husband, if you could blend some more, <laughs> that would be great. Uh, yeah, and I don't know, I, I don't talk about the mugs usually unless they're special, but I just... It's just very cute. I've been watching... Um, is it called How to Change Your Mind on Netflix? And I really like, I always say his name wrong. It's Michael Pollan. I really love his books as it is and his recipe book that he did with his family is one that I'd love to invest in. It's all meals that are meant for sharing, like putting down in the center of the table, which I was talking to my housemate about it last night and how important I feel it is and how special it is to sit at the dinner table. And it's something that I do even alone most evenings because Alex is often working later than me and I'm a I'm an eater, I have to eat or I go a little bit do lally. I think I think
think a lot of us do that. Um, but I just like a, a good window. I'm not a... Once upon a time I would just graze all day. Um, my parents used to call me the fridge grazer because I'd just go to the fridge and just stare and... Um, but yes, this is a waffly one. Um, so yeah, I just think it's really important and I love that book. But it has, it talks about psilocybin and I just thought, I don't know, I've been thinking about mushrooms a lot I guess. So yeah. I thought I'd have this cup. Uh, I am. I wasn't wearing much knitwear. Apart from something you can't see. So under here I'm wearing a My Secret Little Crop. Or My Little Secret Crop. I always say it wrong. Um, by Jessie May. And I just a dress. And then this is my Tolk cardigan. And I love this cardigan. It has been too warm to wear it. Um, recently. It's been very warm in the UK. It's kind of scary. Uh, we've had probably half a kilo of blackberries already from our neighbour's garden that grow down our wall. Uh, so the weather's just broken. Um, but it's been quite a cool day so I'm wearing it and this was knitted using Plutolopi. The pattern is amazing. It fits me beautiful. I've worn this quite a lot in the winter but I just imagine wearing this all next winter coming up and I think we are going away very soon uh, for something that we booked in 2019 uh, and, and I think it's going to get quite cold in the evenings so I think I'm going to take this with my unarmoured defence cowl as kind of a really solid base layer and then maybe my east wind jacket or just another coat so that I've got really warm clothing in case it does drop temperature quite a lot but without having to carry too much stuff so yeah I really love this item uh, I remember the sizing being quite good on both of these um, the modifications that this pattern came with was quite good and I love the the sleeves on this like the shoulders the shaping was amazing and I would love to knit it again but in fact oh, I might I might I might have a I might knit another one but not not yet it's it's definitely a lighter weight knitting and I am going to go back to my arachne jumper which I cast on a little while ago uh, I might actually treat myself to knitting on that a little bit today this evening that is. I have got a preview knit which is very exciting that I can't wait to share with you. I will be by the time this go live good English by the time this has gone live I will have shared uh, a picture of it on Instagram because that's what we were told to do but I have been working on that so I haven't for the last few days treated myself to anything else particularly but I'm excited let's talk knitting I told you it was going to be a waffly one <laughs> thank you for keeping me company <laughs> uh, right here it is <laughs> here it is I'm joking uh, we're gonna need this if I'm to show you properly I think and I need to remember not to look away, I'm just going to have to guess. So I finished another one and I didn't think I would finish this in time but I wanted to finish it for my happy birthday and I did, only when we went out for our meal it was actually too warm to wear it so it was in my bag just waiting patiently for me and I never did wear it. But I had knitted another look at my holes this is a pattern by James N. Watts. It is a wonderful pattern. I have now knit it four times for myself and imagine knitting it more for other people now. I don't think I need another version. <laughs> um, I have a black one that is for winter. It's uh, knitted using Hulse Super Soft. I've knitted a limish green one in the most gorgeous serpentine colour by Iona Wool. And I've knitted a summer version using 
Ito by Kinu. Kinu by Ito. Ito. I always get it wrong, which is 100% silk. And then this one, which is 100% wool. And I think it's by Shibui, but I cannot for the life of me remember what base it was or the colour. I did see it in Beautiful Knitters when I got to go with Charlotte of Nervous Fibre a couple of weeks ago. So it's definitely a base that still exists, I think, but I couldn't see it on any of the websites. I don't know if I'm no longer incapable of searching for things. Um, but I love this colour. It does go very much with my hair and that was partly intentional, but Alex bought me some Nervous Fibre yarn at Christmas and I knitted that into a contrast racer bra a few weeks ago and I've been wearing it quite a lot and I kind of felt like I've got a couple of skirts and items in my wardrobe that this would go perfectly with and the top does so I thought let's have a full outfit because anything black can go over it but I felt like the racer bra while I will wear it happily as just a top I feel like it's not always hot enough to just wear that so this is perfect um, I made a few modifications to this version um, which are very similar to what I've previously done so I cast on and ignored the ribbing so I didn't do any of that I a modification that I have done but forgot to mention multiple times this is inside out um, let's turn it the right way uh, is that I haven't done the lifted increases I have done the uh, just make one increases that I would normally do uh, making sure that they lean left or right accordingly which I don't know I don't mind a lifted increase I think it's fine but a make one is what I have done for so long and it just feels really natural to me and it's like ingrained in my brain so I did that I did one half of a repeat for my sleeves and then I added one uh, two repeats to the bottom of this I'm sure that's right for my size and I knitted the second size I think that's right too um, but I love this thing it is great I actually wore it just yesterday yeah so I, it's getting worn quite a lot and I think it's a beautiful colour a beautiful pattern and I've seen quite a lot of people now knitting on these. I mean, there was already, but if you are after a fun summer knit, it really is fun. Yeah. I've got to be careful of looking away from you, haven't I? <laughs> Uh, so I'll share with these. These are the cheeky ones. No, these are not. This is hard not being able to look. Yeah, these are the cheeky ones. So last week I shared my D's and Donut socks, uh, affectionately called, for sharing on YouTube to make it more child friendly. I, again, I'll stand by it. Bodily parts are not offensive. Um, but I finished them. These are my socks inspired by Jester of Campaign 2 in Critical Role, who is Laura Bailey's little tiefling character. Uh, <laughs> I'll put this on a doodah. I know that I shared them last week. This doodah, aka a sock blocker, is... It, they're great. I need to sand the edges down again I think some of it catches a little bit and I do tend to oil them to try and prevent sort of too much wear and tear from putting damp damp items on wood it doesn't seem like a great pairing but yeah so I have done the pair and they're a lot of fun so
I don't think they're too obnoxious, they're not too in your face, they're cheeky, they're just, you know, socks and obviously you could wear ankle boots and hide them or show it off and I still don't think most people would notice, it's just for my own <laughs> joy. Uh, I knit these using uh, the contrast heel and toe is by Woolen Witch, it was a club colourway called Moongazer. This is amazing. This is Hamster Unicorns, which is a nod to Jester, which is from uh, Chromatic Yarns, aka The Corner of Craft. Hannah does a Critical Role inspired yarn club every month called the Knit Knitical Role Yarn Club. Uh, and this was one of them that I ordered as a surprise and it was a very happy surprise. And uh, I believe Hannah now stocks it when she does updates, which is amazing. Um, I can't remember what this colour is. It's I believe it's a mini from Hedgehog Fibres. Uh, and the tiny little donuts are from... So I have duplicate stitched this on, and this is from Biff Sugar Yarns from the birthday cake little mini that was sent when I ordered yarn for a previous project for her birthday celebration. Uh, so yeah, very simple sock in the end. I did a normal wedge toe. I used knit front back increases. I knit the length of the foot that I felt happy with. I did a short row heel using German short rows. A few rows, a bit of colour work. And then, as I said, I duplicate stitched the donuts on. I thought, first of all, it would just mean that you could make each donut a different colour which I thought was really fun, um, but also gives a little bit of spongy roundiness to it. Yeah, so really fun, inspired by one of my favourite things on the planet, and I really enjoyed knitting them. I want to do another pair where I do this pattern all over, uh, but alternating, um, and I think I might just put the chart up onto Kofi for anyone that feels like they might want to knit some Jester inspired socks. Uh, because it's fun, right? So yeah, I have I have a whip, but I'll show you now because it's really not worth showing. <laughs> uh, but I have started my next sock in this collection. Um, that's, that's, that's your lot, I'm afraid. This was a yarn that Alex purchased for me when I was designing my Brackenside Pines jumper. It's beautiful, it's from Life in the Grass. And I, I believe it might be called Bronze this colour, but I can't be sure. I did try and have a little look. And I've got to be better again at keeping my ball bands and things next to the items, but do get carried away when I'm knitting. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing another toe and that's as far as we've got on our whips for today. So we'll get that over with. But there is more. There is more. Um, I've been talking for 20 minutes. Let me pause. <laughs> I honestly can't believe I've been talking that long already. Has anyone else got the weird feels today? I'm going to take this off actually because I think I'm getting overexcited. Uh. Uh. Yeah, so I have been on a sock kick and that's partly to do with the fact that I only took sock knitting projects with me when we went away. I just, that's all I fancied. I knew that the project that I had been working on that's a preview knit, it would have taken, I'll explain more about it, but it would have taken up a lot of brain power that I absolutely didn't have, both with worrying and just trying to be present and having fun. Uh, not that it wasn't fun to knit, but you know, when you're trying to be present with other people, you don't want, you don't want to take a lace pattern or a cable pattern particularly, unless it's a simple repeat. You know what I'm saying? Um, but 
I will try and work on not saying um as much. I don't realise how much I do it. But I've finished another pair. These ones are really fun and uh, <laughs> so I started these and I only had about this much and I was sort of thinking more like as actually Sweet May who inspired my next pair of socks uh, said that High Wizard vibes like absolutely but Alex was like oh the th that combo reminds me of something and I was like High Wizard like yeah and he was like no and he went and did a google he went and did a google he went and searched online and the lakers whoops so i added a uh, different contrast in to try and take from that a little bit but just it's not really not really my ultimate vibe uh this i can't remember i'm afraid but this is I do have it written down somewhere and I will find it. But this was an amazing gift from when we got married. It was in our butch, in our little box that both of these were. This one is definitely from La Bienna May. This one is from Uticha. I cannot remember, but I will find out both the names and put them on the screen for you because these I have access to. Uh, yeah. And again, this was a very simple sock. If you are new to knitting socks or want to knit socks, there's some really great tutorials on YouTube. Uh, Earth Tones Girl being an amazing person to go to. But I just do a simple wedge toe, and this is the same for basically all these. I start with 12 stitches on two needles, so I have 24 stitches. I increase up to 64 stitches. It's just my preferred they they're not tight on me they don't have too much negative ease but they're not too floppy and it means that i can share them with alex comfortably uh he might wear these they're a bit jazzy but he probably will and then do a few extra rounds without increasing in my contrast color if i'm doing it i tend to just like it it keeps me a bit more entertained uh i knit up I did the same, basically it's a very similar thing as knitting a toe. Uh, if you wanted to do exactly the same, you can do an afterthought heel where you just put a ra round of half a row of waist yarn in there and then you pick up the stitches and then un undo the waist yarn and then you just knit a toe. Uh, but I just like this technique, you can do it as you go, the sock is basically done, there's no picking up stitches, which I don't mind at all, but it's just no fuss, it's easy to remember for me. And then I just did a few round rounds and a little bit of striping and some ribbing. Super simple, super fun, I thought again. And just, so I, <laughs> I am a person of very simple pleasures, I think. Uh, and I've been talking about having some sort of walking sandals for a long time I have inherited a lot of I inherit a lot of things from family um, most of the things in our home or from friends or from people down the road I'm looking at the little futon we've got from our neighbours like shoes from my, my sister my mum and I always have had like sandals or my walking boots are different but I often have I've always had sandals that are either hand-me-down or not quite fit for purpose. I like my Birkenstocks, but I don't find them practical when it starts to really heat up. Uh, and to be honest, I've worn them into the ground. The cork is just, um, I would get them, but you do not want to see something that ugly. So I recently, well, for my happy birthday, I'll do the Velcro. I, I was given a little bit of birthday money and I spent a little bit of it on tick tests and tick repellent um, but on some sturdy waterproof walking sandals but how good are they gonna look together 
and I also I don't know why I'm wearing these here it's because I kind of want to wear them in a bit but I'll take the other one off and I quite like to sit and cross my legs when I'm talking to you I am <laughs> why am I telling you this but I'm actually sat on my sofa but on a foam block on and then on a cushion so that I can be this height <laughs> I've tried all kinds of setups, but actually moving the whole living room so that the sofa moves somehow makes the whole setup better and is way more comfortable. So I do like to sit cross-legged and, and now I've got my shoes off, I can. But yeah, I'm very excited by this. I have wanted some really heavy duty sandals for quite some time. And obviously this is sideways and things, but I can be that person that I've always dreamed of that's not wearing Birkenstocks anymore, but fun socks and sandals. <laughs> uh, yeah, so another fun pair and just using up, using up some yarns that I've really wanted to knit with, but I haven't, hadn't been sure what to do with them. So that's two really fun. pairs of socks. <laughs> uh, and I do have a third pair. This pair is maybe the most... I don't know. So I pulled these two colours out maybe three weeks ago and I was looking at knitting a top with them and I've been doing this time and time again. This is the, the colour that I have the most of and this, which I love, is the colour that I have a little bit of. So I've got quite a bit more than this, but... So I've got... I had, when I started knitting these, I had 100 grams of this and 200 of this, and I thought it would be a really lovely top, but I... I it's a nice colour, uh, but we know that I can't really be trusted. Like, the fact that I've got this colour socks is maybe a terrible idea, but, you know, I'll put them in the wash and it'll be fine. Uh, so I thought, you know what, I bought this for a shawl, but this is Mondim by Retrosaria. It's a really, really gorgeous base. Um, I, I purchased my first bit of Mondim for socks, knowing that it's brilliant for socks, and Alex so I really like the socks I knitted. I knitted the intersection socks by Marcy, Marceline of Hay Brown Berry. Such a fun pattern to knit and I probably will knit them again. But Alex claimed them straight away. So I know that A, they're lovely and B, it holds up as sock yarn. So when I went away, the, I think two days before May, sorry May, I'm gonna keep talking to you today. Um, if you don't know, May on is amazing on Instagram, is the most gorgeous blanket knitter um, and fun sock knitter. And knitted a pair of Colourwork Mondim socks and I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll put it in my bag and see. I didn't expect to finish these while I was away, but I'd already done most of one. And then the second one just kind of knitted itself. We did a lot of driving. Um, it took us four hours to get 60 miles away from our house, which is ridiculous. Uh, M25 doing the things. Uh, anyway, M25 is the worst. It's just the worst. Uh, but I took this with me and I cast on and finished another pair. <laughs> I didn't finish these, I think I finished this one on Sunday, so it took me a while but not long and I love them. They are very much the same construction, it seems to be that that is what I'm loving right now and do you know what, I quite like that you can do something so similar and they look so different. So these all have nylon in. Uh, which is something that I sort of try and I do try and avoid, 
but I have it and I love it so like these yarn but I have it and I love these yarns and the colours in particular so I'm gonna use them for sure but these are special because they are back to no nylon Ooh. Uh, again same toe and the, all the same until I got to here where I increased a few stitches to make sure that my stitch count worked for my checkerboard I drew up some checkerboard socks a couple of weeks ago and I think I was like no nah, I won't do it because I saw how they fit and blah 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 and I was like yeah maybe you won't do it and then I just really fancied colour work so I just did it uh, but yeah so I increased a couple of stitches just to make this work I thought I might only do two rounds of the check and I might knit them again and do that um, these will definitely be shared by me and Alex the Mondim yarn is a bit heavier uh, so it knit up just a little bit bigger but I've already tried them on with this stitch count so I know that it's going to be fine and then I decreased a few stitches in the ribbing just to make sure that it hugs in a little bit more and yeah that's that's basically all I did and I really like them the way they fit is great I am on an absolute sock kick apparently and I even I've woven in all my ends on all of these. What's happened? <laughs> I was never a sock knitter and I was never the person to weave in my ends. But I have. And I don't normally get a chance to block things before sharing with you, so... I don't know, pat myself on the back a little bit for that? Yeah. Quite a cool collection, I think. All a bit different, but fun. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to knitting some more socks. I'm hoping I have some yarn, I believe will arrive maybe today or tomorrow if the delivery service is good. Um, and it, it means I can start knitting on a project, which is very exciting. Um, and it won't be for me, it'll be for a sample, but, but a sample of my thing that I'm knitting for someone else, which is cool. Uh, the, one of the first times I've done that this year. And yeah, what to say, we, like I said, we went away. And it was really, really lovely. On Wednesday we went to see my sister and her husband and their child, our nephew, and my mum and dad. The, the dog I also came, which was a good bonus. And we went out for dinner in Horsham, uh, where my sister lives. But like the journey down there was wild. I did knit the whole of a sock foot and I think the heel by the time we got there. Uh, but we'd stopped on the way and we went to Nep just for sort of a 45 minute walk. We just really needed A, to stretch our legs and B, to be in nature for a little bit. It was really, really nice. Um, there'll be a bit of footage of that. And then in the morning, not too early, but fairly early, we went to Dorset. We went to the Isle of Purbeck. And when we got there, we went to a really lovely RSPB reserve, which was called Arn and we had a nice walk in the sun and the shade. We saw quite a lot of creatures, uh, including, well, yeah, we just saw quite a lot of creatures. I won't list them all. And then, what did we do? We went to Swanage that evening after we checked into our lovely uh, little hut. It was a wooden, wooden pod and we went for a swim, which was really lovely, and we got chibis. Uh, that was really good. We even went into the arcade. It's not normally my thing, and I did sort of come out, and I was like, whoa, that was so overstimulating, and we were probably only in there for 10 minutes. Uh, but I did get my uh, fortune done by Zoltar. Uh, 
he didn't get me. Um, <laughs> he told me I was a, a I can't remember, but it was something along the lines of I, I, I caused trouble. And maybe I did, but I, I, I just felt like I was a very quiet, shy child, so I feel like he misread me. Because <laughs> it's real. Um, yeah, that was fun. And then on the Friday? Where did we go in the morning? I can't remember. We definitely went back to um, the RSPB uh, reserve again because we just loved it and we wanted to see a few more things and Alex was definitely looking for adders and lizards. We saw a few, uh, well not adders, we saw a few lizards and we met a really really lovely man called Tony who referred to himself as Tony the birds and there was also Tony the spiders which is why he had that as a name <laughs> and he was really kind he showed us about uh, the damselflies and dragonflies in the little pond that we were looking at which was really low obviously because of the weather uh, but also pointed out wasp spiders, which were very cool. Um, and I think Alex got some really nice footage of them. So if you don't like spiders, but they're very cool looking. And um, yeah, and then we sat by, we went to Wareham for a little bit. And we had a really nice little dinner and a little half pint by the by the river, watching people swim and feed ducks. And then we played a lot of Yahtzee in the evenings and had, I think there must have been about 60 birds. Are they birds? Yeah, there must be. There was about 60 sort of peacocks, chickens, geese and ducks on the place we stayed, which was really, really lovely and uh, quite chaotic to have a cup of tea with. And then we got up and went to the market before we drove home because Alex did get to go bike riding with his friend. Uh, so he dropped me off at home and then kind of had a little time to faff on Saturday and then went off. And then Sunday was just a bit of a chaos day. Uh, ended up, you know, climbing into the loft and trying to sort a few things out and making it a little bit nicer in the house. Um, I don't know, today feels really weirdly like autumn and it's still, you know, a month into summer. So, yeah, I don't know why I said that, but it does. Maybe it's because I've got a chai and the candles are burning over there and it does smell a little bit like, you know. I always have Christmas candles burning. Uh, my mum gave me one for, for my birthday, so I just really like those sort of cedary or cinnamony, warm vanilla-y scents. I like everything to be honest, but they are, they're the smell of home. So yeah, now I've waffled, I hope that you do enjoy some of the nature footage I hope it brings you some joy and a little bit of escapism uh, I hope that you and yours are well don't forget to give your loved ones a big hug big squeeze when you can and look after yourselves and one another take care of yourself and I hope to see you again very soon don't forget to love each other
can't, if you stay still, we can't see you, buddy. Buddy.
sharing tea with me. Sexy time. Just call me Attenborough.
bonito. Good, it, very nice. This one could be very attractive.